Hey guys, Ash here from CurseForward.com and welcome to episode 12 of Android Tips on CurseForward TV. So in the past few episodes, we've been going through my top 20 apps for rooted Android devices. So we've taken a look at 15 of these apps. So let's take a look at the final five. Okay, let's get started, guys. So the first app we're going to take a look at is GMD Speed Time. So these days, there are a lot of free games that come with microtransaction options. So these games also do give you uh, rewards like uh, uh, an everyday reward or stuff that takes a lot of time to complete. So say for example the farming games that uh, require a certain amount of time for your crops to grow and so on. So what GMD speed time does is, is it speeds up time. So you don't have to wait for a longer time to uh, get certain tasks to complete. It does have a few side effects though as in uh, any kind of text you receive in that time period might get me um, you know the timestamp might, might show up wrong, your phone might slow down a bit because, uh, you know, your if you have your phone, say you have uh, your phone syncing stuff every hour, since you're speeding, at t speeding up time, it's going to sync uh, more often. So these are the side effects and with the full version, that is the paid version, you can speed up time by, uh, I mean, X thousand. You can do a 2X speed up and uh, 10X is the maximum for the free version. So all you need to do is hit it and hit start. You'll get a prompt for a super user request, grant it, and your time starts speeding up. Every six seconds, my time changes. And to get things back to normal, just go into speed time and hit stop. And once you hit stop, your time does come back to normal. Again, just to show you, Start. All right. Enough. You can see the time is 17, 23, 23, 18. And just going back in and stopping it will bring my time back to normal. So yeah, this is a pretty simple app, and despite the possible issues. Uh, you know that it brings along with it. I kind of feel that this is something that every rooted user should know about and if needed use so uh, That's app number 16 on the list. So moving on. So guys the next app on the list is Juice Defender Juice Defender is by far the best battery management app for Android today So the light I mean the free version that you see over here uh, Is pretty light on features, but still it helps it helps you get that every last drop of juice from your dying battery so with the free version you get a you get the balanced and aggressive options and uh, you get a few customization options as well uh, just a moment so there you see uh, the battery threshold for the, to kick in at 5 15 config, uh, configuring apps which is not enabled with uh, the free variant and uh, the notifications and so on what I really like about this app is that it caters to two different demographics. Uh, first are the kind of people who just want to get the best mileage out of their batteries. You just open it up, hit balanced, aggressive or extreme and you're done with it. Just choose whatever works for you. Uh, on the other hand, you've got people who want to tweak and then tweak some more to their heart's content and manage every little aspect of their battery, I mean of how their battery is used. And for these people, you've got a lot of advanced options as well. But then again, these are available, uh, most of these options are available only with uh, the paid version. So you've got a lot of options here. And again, uh, you've got a uh, compare features here just to show you the amount of options that's available with the plus and ultimate va variants of this uh, app. And it's really good. It does a lot of automation. Uh, you can configure your screen timeout, lock control, screen brightness control, CP, you can even play around with your CPU frequency settings, the GPUs, GPU, GPS control, uh, Bluetooth controls. To conserve battery, you can even set a sync schedule, a night schedule, peak schedule, weekend schedules, and so on. So there are a lot of options here. You can schedule your data connectivity to uh, turn on, say for example, over here, turn on every 30 minutes and stay on for a minute every time it's turned on. Again, you can have uh, night settings. You have a lot of features here to play around with. Over here, you can select uh, you can select the data connectivity to be triggered uh, when certain apps run. You can even set it to turn Wi-Fi on only when a certain few networks are detected. So if getting every last bit of juice from your dying battery is your thing, 
uh, and if you're rooted then Juice Defender is a must-have app for you. So the next app on the list is Link to SD. What Link to SD does is it lets you move your apps uh, to your SD card. So uh, with the recent versions of Android, a lot of apps uh, by default you can move them over to the SD card. But again, it's a pain to go ahead and do it individually. Over here, you can just select mm, multi-select and select whatever apps you want to move to your SD card and select actions and you can move it to SD or you can create a link to SD. What that means is for those apps which, which uh, you cannot natively move over to the SD card, you can create a partition on your SD card and actually uh, move those apps there. All right, I know it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Let me just show you. So guys, this is what you need to do. From the download section in the description, get the link to a mini tool partition wizard. That's a free software. Just download it and install it on your win Windows PC. Pull your memory card out. Pop it into a micro SD card uh, reader. Plug it into your PC. And now uh, transfer everything uh, that's on the card onto your PC. Just back it up. So guys, now go ahead and click on Move Resize Partition and uh, create about um, create about one gig uh, free space. So I'm gonna resize it to 6.5 and hit OK and just click click Apply. All right, guys. Now just right click the unallocated part, hit Create, and now select Primary and FAT32. Alright, as for drive letter, select none. And now hit OK. And now hit apply. So this is gonna take a few seconds to just uh, wait for it to complete. Alright guys, uh, we are done. So both say FAT32. So you can just uh, remove your micro SD card now and we are done with Windows. So popping the micro SD card back in and we are back to link to SD. So right now we select FAT32 and hit OK. And it asks you to reboot your phone, so reboot it. All right guys, we're back up, so going into link to SD again. Hit OK. So right now we did not get the pop-up again, which means uh, the partition has been mounted without any issues. So whatever app we want, we can now link it, create a link and transfer it to DSD card. So, so now even those apps that cannot be transferred to SD card natively can still be moved to the SD card using the link to SD method. So this is what makes link to SD indispensable for any rooted user. The next app on the list is Tasker. Again, I thought really long and hard on whether I should include this app in the list. Because uh, Tasker on its own can run without root access. But then again, for some of its functionality, it does require root access. And since it's really, really a great app, I thought, let me go ahead and include it. So what is Tasker? It is basically an app that's built to make our lives easier, automate a lot of stuff for us. So let me give you an example of how it works. Uh, the basics. With Tasker, you've got profiles and tasks. Profiles are like a certain set of conditions that need to be met for something to happen. That something are tasks. So let me give you an example. When I'm at home, I don't want to have my lock screen uh, activated. So I turn off the phone, I turn it back on, there you see my lock screen. So let's go ahead and create a profile here. All right, this is home lock. And how, do, how am I going to detect whether I'm home? So I'm going to go ahead and select my Wi-Fi wi -Fi network as the condition. So whenever I'm connected to my home's Wi-Fi network, I'm going to take it that it means I'm home and make sure that uh, the phone doesn't ask me for a, lo uh, for a key code. Uh, how do we do that? So let's select state, net, uh, Wi-Fi connected, SSID is FIDO and hit OK. And now we're going to select a task. The task is, sorry, lock 
off. So let me add an action. Display key guard. And I'm gonna set it as yeah, off. Okay. And yes. So now if, this is to test it out, so I'm gonna test it out now. So turn off, turn on. There you see it is not asking me for my pattern. So hitting yes and let's activate it. So now I'm connected to Fido. Turn off, turn on, no key code. So let's also create what happens when I'm not connected to Fido anymore. Because as of this uh, profile, whenever I get connected to my network Fido, it turns off my screen lock. So even when I get disconnected, there isn't a rule to change it. So what I do here, is I create an ed exit task. Exit task is in uh, what happens when this rule is not active. So I'm gonna go ahead and call the task lock on. So adding it, again, display, key guard. This time I'm turning it back on. Yes, yes. So, just to show you guys, I've turned off my screen, turning it back on, no key, uh, no pattern unlock, turning off Wi-Fi, turning off my screen, turn it back on, there you go, I'm asked for my, uh, I'm asked for my passcode, or my pattern rather. So this is about... 1% uh, of what Tasker can actually do because there are loads of options and covering everything is beyond the scope of this video that is about three 20 minute videos in itself so again there is a video on exactly how how to set up and use Tasker how to tweak it and advanced stuff that you can do with it uh, made by XDA developers uh, I am adding a link to that video in the description as well so if you guys want more info on Tasker you can check that out so while basic stuff like this does not require root access, sometimes for, for certain few tasks like, uh, all right, let's just, uh, let's just create a test profile here. Application, uh, when, whenever Chrome is on, new task, again, test. Let's kill an app. Kill app. Whenever Chrome is on, uh, I want to make sure yes, file, file explorer is off. I mean, yeah, I know it doesn't make sense, but just to show you, uh, f for some actions, uh, you get an option to use root. Because say, for example, killing app doesn't work without root all the time. It's more of a hit and miss. But when you use root access, uh, when you give the when you give Tasker uh, super user privileges, you're sure that the process is going to be killed. So it's for some features like this that Tasker requires root access. And with the ton of automation and functionality that ta Tasker brings to the table, Tasker finds itself a slot on a top 20 must-have apps for rooted Android users. So guys, you know how they say, uh, save the best for the last? Because that's exactly what I was thinking about when I left ROM Toolbox till the end. Uh, ROM Toolbox is like the mother of all root apps. It is uh, a lot of apps that we've seen so far in this video rolled into one. Uh, but still, I've mentioned all the other apps in this video because there are some things that uh, they could do a little better than ROM Toolbox. But ROM Toolbox gives you the basic functionality, even more than basic functionality, of a lot of apps that we've seen in this list so far. First off, ROM Management. From ROM management, you can install ROMs. You can, uh, okay, here, this is my custom recovery. So you can install ROMs. Uh, you can manage your recovery. Uh, you can maintain backups and so on. App manager. Again, this is a little bit, uh, does a little bit of the work that uh, Titanium Backup does. So you can backup apps. You can uh, restore apps. Uh, you can even, you can even freeze apps and so on. Just showing you. There you go. You can freeze it, backup open it, share it, and install it. And then you have root browser. So if there, if there are any mods that you have to, uh, you know, uh, 
you have to paste in the hidden fol folders that are usually hidden hidden to you, like the data folder or the system folder. So uh, you can access that. Just uh, just similar to the functionality that we discussed when we were talking about ES File Explorer, you find it here. Now, if going back again, you've got a scripter that can, yeah, you can use it to uh, execute scripts. Again, I have a few tutorials on that. Uh, okay, say for example, swapping the internal and external memories on an Xperia Z that needs you to uh, execute a certain script. Again, that can be done using the scripter. You've got a terminal, emul ter terminal emulator uh, wherein you can directly run a Linux command line utilities. Uh, a DNS changer, auto start manager to control the apps that run on startup. You've got apps to SD. So usually whatever app you download, they install to the internal SD uh, and then you have to go into apps or use a, the, you know, another app like a link to SD to uh, actually move it to the SD card. With this, you can directly uh, ensure that the apps installed to the SD card. And then you've got the rebooter to select uh, any of these. Rebooter, recovery or bootloader restart system UI and so on and then you've got performance you've got CPU control where you can overclock or uh, select your select the minimum clock speed the maximum clock speed the Galaxy Note 2 uh, the maximum speed is 1600 See, over here I can overclock it to 1800 I'm gonna get it back to 1600 again a lot of functionality that you get uh, uh, that that was found in uh, with set CPU again, it's not uh, again. Uh, say for example, with the root browser, uh, the root browser on uh, the root browser and ROM toolbox light is not as functional as say ES File Explorer. Similarly, uh, the CPU control over here doesn't give you all the functionality of set CPU. But then again, it's nice to see a, lo a lot of these included with one app. So again, you've got a build prop editor. This lets you play around with the LCD density uh, settings. You've got a task manager, SD card uh, speed booster. You've got a font installer. You can uh, select boot animations. You can swap boot animations. You can you can even set it to display uh, a different anim boot animation every time every time you reboot. And you've got a theme manager, you can uh, change your status bar icons, theme chooser. So, uh, you know, you have a lot of options, you've got a lot of functionality. So to sum it up, if you've rooted your phone and you don't have ROM Toolbox Lite, there's still a lot about rooting that you need to learn. So this is a must-have app for anybody who's rooted their Android device. So that's ROM Toolbox Lite. So I guess it's taken us about one hour and four episodes to get here, but that is my top 20 must-have root apps for any rooted user. So I hope you guys like the list. So after four back-to-back -back serious videos, for the next episode of Android Tips, let's unwind a little bit and take a look at some awesome free casual games. So before you do that, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons, because every time you guys do that, uh, it increases the odds of this video being suggested by uh, YouTube to other users. So go ahead, help me out, hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Till then, it's Ash here from CurseForward.com signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.